hope you are well. If you are new around here, then hello, it is lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. My name is Alana and I'm a 35 year old lady living in Scotland who normally likes to ramble on about beauty, skincare, lifestyle, travel, blogger, vloggery, all that kind of bullshit. The liberal sprinkling of sarcasm and cynicism thrown in on the top. I am from Scotland and I do like the odd sweary word, so if that is not for you and you don't like the words fuck, shite and bugger, I completely understand. Please feel free to vacate at any point. If you do like the sound of that kind of thing, there's a subscription button in the corner. Please give it a little thumbs up or a like as well on this video. This video, it's a word of warning, this is going to be pregnancy content. I'm letting you know again because I know a lot of my subscribers don't really come here for that. But if you are new and this is what you've came for, I am currently 35 weeks pregnant today and as you can see behind me probably, I have bags packed. This video is going to be my what is in my hospital bags for me and for baby and all the bits thrown in between. I feel like I'm coming to this with a good mind because I am also a, a staff nurse and I work in a hospital. So sometimes when you watch a lot of these videos there is a lot of things that I think you don't need to take that, you don't need to take that, you don't need to take that. It is very personal and there might be things on my list that you think I absolutely would not take that and I absolutely would need to take something else. That is absolutely fine as well. Please be respectful, please understand that this is my point of view and what I'm going to be taking. And also this is what I'm going to be taking for a planned elective caesarean section. Now that doesn't mean to say that I've chosen I need a section. If you haven't been watching already I'll put the pregnancy vlogs up in the corner here. I have ongoing health issues that mean that section is probably the safer option for me and it is the decision that myself and my partner have came to. So although it is elective that just means that it is planned rather than me going into labour and then getting so far on and then it becoming an emergency section that is the only difference and as I say if you want to see more of my thoughts and feelings and how I've been getting on in pregnancy those vlogs will be in the corner in the cards somewhere if you fancy watching them but otherwise if you do know me and you've been here before grab yourself a tea, a coffee, a cuppa, whatever the fuck you like and if you are not a pregnant person at the moment grab yourself a whiskey or a wine as well that is absolutely fine. I have got a little tea today instead of coffee. Just fancied a cup of tea today. It's a little bit grey outside. Felt like, you know, just kind of fancied a cup of tea. So before I just get into this, I am going to slot a little bit of footage in to show you the cabin bag that I'm bringing to give you a good idea of what the size is like. This bag right behind me here is what is going to be my nappy bag and I will show you that closer but I didn't really want to have to like lift the cabin bag over. I'm going to put it on my table, pull the stuff out and show you but I didn't want to be having to pull that all over for this video. So I'm going to put in this little bit of footage just so you can see the size of it. Um, it's just a cabin baggage size case. So you could take this on to like, you know, your typical Ryanair flight, wherever it is you're going. It's hand luggage. So it is not a big case. Now I picked this up from Amazon years ago, years and years ago. Me and Alan have got one. He's got a blue one. I've got this kind of gunmetal silver one. We've used them for absolute years. I'm sure I've done other packing videos and this has been in it. And it is normally what I would take to do a kind of capsule wardrobe as well. Like if we go away, trips to Europe and stuff, pre-COVID, um, I would maybe be able to pack at least five to seven days worth of clothes in one of these bags. It's absolutely fine for that kind of reason. So I'm gonna show you what I've got in it for me. There is a couple of things for baby in this bag as well because their actual nappy bag isn't quite big enough to fit everything in it, but we'll get into that. Okay, so now that you've seen that, I just wanna put in another little disclaimer here. Promise we'll get into the bags in two seconds. Um, First of all, I have to say, this is obviously gonna be a UK-based kind of situation. In the UK, we do have a, what do you call it, universal health system. It's called the NHS, and I work within the NHS. So therefore, this is gonna be pretty different from a lot of the kind of mum and baby vlogs that you see, or what I've packed in my hospital bag, where they are taking things like, um, just stuff that, that probably, I don't know if it needs to be paid for in the USA, but, I don't need to take that much stuff when I'm going to the hospital. I know there will still be people in the UK that overpack and bring absolutely everything, maybe after watching a few videos like that. So I'm hoping that this gives you an idea of what you probably do need and what is just not required. I will go through that. I've wrote a little list down of things that I just don't think you necessarily need or kind of points to 
bring up in this video because as a nurse I'm like why would you take a blanket why would you do this why would you do that and that is just a very personal standpoint if you want to take your own pillow and you want to take your own blanket by all means go ahead but personally I'm just like what's the need I'm not sure why people in America do that as well like do you get charged per pillow <laughs> that you get to use and um, there are other little things like hand gel for instance I see every single woman putting hand gel into their bag and they always say especially in Covid times I am telling you right now that every hospital in the UK unless there's something wrong will have a hand gel by your bedside especially here in NHS Scotland and I work specifically in NHS Glasgow and the trust throughout the country like whether it's NHS Scotland or NHS England they will differ slightly in what is provided but as a general consensus, most of the things that you need to go and have a baby will be given to you. All right, so let's start off with the nappy bag. This actually still has its tag on it because this came as part of a travel system that we got because we got the Baba Bing Rafi Pram. It also came with a Joy car seat, car base, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, bassinet, blah, 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 blah. But it also came with this backpack and it is the Manny backpack. Uh, it also came with, let me just show you, a little matching bottle holder, which I'm sure is like insulated. Yeah, it's a little insulated, I've not even took this out yet. A little insulated bottle holder to keep things warmer if you want to take a flask of hot water with you when you're taking baby out and about, which is really, really useful. But I will not be taking this to the hospital because I don't feel it's required. It also came with a lovely little changing mat as well to match so that if you're out and about and you need to change baby that is here it's wipeable as well so I actually think this is a really lovely changing bag slash backpack and it's very much in my kind of style I really like it it is navy I don't know if it'll be coming up more kind of black on the camera but it is navy with kind of little tan accents there and the reason I really liked it as well is it obviously attaches to our pram but it's also a backpack so Alan can carry it about as well I didn't want one of those kind of older older old-fashioned I was gonna say please don't take offense to that if you've got one of the older versions but you know like a more classic style of changing bag I didn't want one like that because I think it does look a little bit more effeminate and I just feel like I thought I would like it that Alan can take this bag out if he's out and about or if I can take it out and about I just prefer more classic simple style and that is why I like it so again before I get into this a little bit of a disclaimer you'll be like I'm fucking sick of these already um I as I say I'm going in for an elective c-section which means I will be there the day before uh, the reason being for that is because of my diabetes and because of my heart and things like that I am going to be in not induced but I'm going to be brought in a little bit earlier um, which means they have to give me a course of steroids as well, which means I need to go into sliding scale insulin. So they want me in the day before, like morning of before, I'm supposed to go for section. I think in the situation where you don't have these other kind of extenuating circumstances and you're a perfectly healthy lady, but maybe baby is breech and that is why you're getting your section, etc. Or maybe you've had a section before so you're booked in for an elective one in your second pregnancy. Then potentially you can go in the morning of straight from home and get your section done that day. But for me, I will be in the day before, probably nine o'clock in the morning. I will stay overnight in the hospital and I will hopefully get taken first thing the next morning because diabetic people are usually always first on the list. So unless there is an emergency, that is the situation. With that being said as well, we have been prepared that our baby may well go to the neonatal unit, the ICU, and for that reason I have packed enough to last me five days to a week-ish. I'm saying that, probably more like five days, but we live very, very close to the hospital that I'm going to, so if there's any issues, I know Alan can come back home, pick me stuff up and drop it off. Now, while I'm saying that, I thought I may as well throw in about visiting as well, because in this climate at the moment, people are very unsure of the situation with COVID. I know poor women, God bless them, who gave birth during the height of COVID and the height of the pandemic, had to be on their own for quite a bit of time until their partner was allowed in to be with them during labour. I am very fortunate that my um, my hospital says that basically as soon as I get taken for section, Alan can come in and see me. But when I'm on a ward, a normal ward, be it antenatal or postnatal, uh, they do have visiting times in my hospital. So Alan will only be allowed in for like two hours in the afternoon and one hour in the evening. It is very difficult and I feel as I say, as a nurse and knowing that the, the kind of 
normal healthcare, not the maternity healthcare, the adult healthcare situation. Uh, visiting is very much back in, in place and it's not for me to say whether or not maternity are being too strict or not, but there is a little bit of me that's quite sad about that. And I actually have a friend down in England who just gave birth to a baby boy three weeks ago as I filmed this and her visiting times were 10 in the morning till 6 in the evening, which just seemed multitude better than what I've got, but, but, at least he is going to get in and he will be with me through the section and he will be able to be with me afterwards it's just once i go back to award then the visiting times will kick in so for that reason like i say alan will not be staying with me overnight there is nothing in this bag for alan not a sausage it's all for me and it's all for baby that is generally how it is done in the uk i know i watch some american youtubers who are like i've packed the bag for me my hubby and the baby and we've got snacks for hubby and we've got this for hubby no in the UK, it's a general rule of thumb. Of course, your husband can be there throughout labour. If you're labouring for two days, of course he can be there. But it's not like a general thing, like once you've had your baby, he then stays with you. Certainly that I've never been witness to in Scotland. Uh, and when I have visited people who have had babies, friends and family, it's not just the general thing that is done that hubby stays. He comes during visiting, he can come and see you. And at the moment, as I say, the visiting is very, very strict due to COVID. As I say, I do think this is a lovely bag. It opens up really like large on the top here, which is really, really nice. And as you might have seen in the little clip at the start there, not absolutely everything for baby is in this. This is more clothes, stuff like that. So right at the very top, ah, actually, before I get right to the very top, I have this, which is an empty, empty plastic wallet. Reason being, one of the first things I've got on my list is that Every video that I ever watch has got people saying, I've got my maternity notes with me. Don't forget these, they're really important. And I'm like, what maternity notes? Certainly here in Glasgow, in NHS Glasgow, I don't have any maternity notes. I get a letter to say when my next appointment is, for instance. Uh, I got a lot of information when I first went to my booking appointment and stuff like that. But I don't have maternity notes. I don't keep my own hospital notes. They give, give them back at the end of every appointment. And basically, it's all online and stuff like that now. I'm pretty sure that's probably how most NHS trusts work in Scotland. But don't quote me, because it's been a while since I've not worked in Glasgow. I used to work in NHS Fife, and that was... Oh, six seven years ago so that was a while ago now it might have been like that back then it might have changed since then i do not know but certainly in glasgow you don't take your hospital notes home with you they stay in the hospital and you get them again at the next appointment so this empty folder <laughs> this empty wallet is because i know once baby is actually here and we are discharged we will be given lots of information with regards to how to register them. How, like, once they've been born, you need to go and register them as a person, um, officially, put their name on something, etc. But it also might be things like when my next appointments are, when maybe a health visitor will follow up with me, uh, my own appointments, because again, if I'm C-section, I might have a follow-up appointment. So I've got this empty wallet with me to put any important information in that we may need to take home so it doesn't get lost or stuffed in a bag somewhere. It's going to be in here. I then have a packet of water wipes. Again, you can get the Aldi brand. I got these free on Amazon. If you have not seen my collecting free baby stuff in the UK, I'm going to put the video up here in the corner. So I am taking a packet of these. The other thing I will say is, I know for a fact that the hospital will provide water and cotton wool. That will not be a problem. So really, I might just take these. I've then segregated the baby's kind of clothes and nightwear and sleepwear and all that kind of stuff into packing cubes. I have seen a lot of people on YouTube, whether it's UK or USA based or anywhere else in the world, to be honest with you, uh, using sandwich bags, like, you know, freezer bags, little plastic baggies to put outfits into. There's two reasons why I didn't want to do that. One, it's just like a bit of a faff to put everything into a little plastic bag, label it, and I'm going to be honest with you, I just think a lot of people will say, oh, well, it'll help my husband just pull something out of the bag. Honestly, like, are we really discrediting our husband so much? Like, I would like to think Alan will know if I say to him, can I get that bag over? He would just know. I don't know why. I think it's maybe different when you are going into... An actual labour when you know you need things like maybe it is a snack or something like that or sweets and things to say to him gonna go into that bag or gonna go and get me my nice face spray to cool me down a bit because in labour I would like to be pulled down. If it's things like that then maybe 
But for the baby stuff, I'm just a bit like, why does it all need to be segregated? Also, it's loads of plastic bags. And lastly, I'd seen loads of people putting them into outfits. But if the baby, for instance, spews a little bit on itself or then poops itself, if it gets on any parts of those clothes, you might not need to change every single part of the outfit. You might just need to change the sleep shoot. Shoot. <laughs> every time. Every time I say words like that, I'm like Sean Connery. But you might only need to change the sleep suit. You might only need to change the vest. You might only need to change a hat. You might not need to change a hat at all because of where it is on their head. So for that reason, I just thought I would rather just put it in one little bag and Alan can pull this out. Now in this bag, I have got sleep suits. I'm just gonna pull them out and show you them here. One, two, three, four, four, five. Yes, I've got five. So these are sleep suits, they all have the little, um, what do you call them, they all have feet on the bottom and then they have like fold over mitts on the hands as well. So I don't really need to worry too much about scratch mitts and socks if they are wearing these. But I'm taking five. Again, overkill, yes. But I am not going in for what is considered a normal birth where you might get out within six hours or 24 hours. I think my baby might be in the hospital a little longer so I've got five sleep suits. I then have five vests as well, so like just the little kind of, let me show you, these ones are quite cute, there's little bears on them, of course there's little bears on them because that's why I call them little bear, um, they're just like the little vests because again, you know, I, I was being a little bit of a new mum here but I was like, sleep suit, do they need a vest under that? Yes, pro probably they do to keep warm so I'm taking five of them as well. I think um, also if they're wearing one of these then they're in a blanket and they don't necessarily need the sleep suit then I can go between the two of them if it's maybe quite warm in the hospital I will be advised by the people who are there at the time. As for sizes I have also seen lots of people be like I'm taking newborn and I'm taking you know four sets of newborn and four sets of zero to three. I am not doing that for the simple reason I know that my baby is probably going to be huge. So I have majority of things zero to three. The sleep suits are all zero to three and see at the end of the day if it means they're flopping about their hand a little bit or flopping about their feet a little bit, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world as long as they are warm. But what I will say is that I was very, very kindly donated some kind of, I would say more newborn stuff from a family member. Now I had this bag all packed and ready to go with all my zero to three. And when I went to see my uh, obstetrician last week, basically they were like, you're still gonna need some newborn stuff though. And I was like, really? Even if they're nine pounds 12? And then again, the friend who's just recently had a little boy, I asked her because she did have a nine pound 12 baby. I said to her, you know, I've bought all this stuff and I'm a little bit worried that now people are telling me I need newborn. And she was like, don't worry, I've done the exact same thing. And she went, it just meant we had to pick up a new pack of newborn kind of sleep suits on the way home. It's fine, don't worry about it. So as I was donated some little bits from friends, I then slotted these in and these are the vests and these are in one to two months. So they're still not like tiny. I think this one is zero to one month, but I thought I'll bring the slightly smaller ones just in case. And I swapped them in for kind of more zero to three ones that I already had in there. I then have muslin cloths or muslin blankets, sheets, whatever you want to call them. Um, I am taking five. Now again, is this overkill? Yes, I probably don't need this many, but from watching certain videos, people who have been in for one day, two day, maybe even three days, they've only taken two to three. And if I'm gonna be in five days to a week, I just thought, you know what, five seems like a sensible number. I then have in this side pocket here, because there's lots of like different little slots in this bag as well. I should probably mention that. It's a really lovely bag. Uh, it's got two pockets on the side, nice zip on the front here, and a little kind of private pocket in the back here for your phone as well. So I'm also going to show you this, which I have put into a little glossier bag. And this is hats and mitts. So I think, how many hats have I got? Three, four? One, two, three, yes, four hats, sorry, I had to check there. And I am taking three sets of mittens. Because as I say, a lot of the sleep suits I've got, I've got the pullover cuffs on them, so I don't think I'll need that many. But two of them match the hats that are in there anyway. And I thought I'll just throw in an extra pair just in case. This bag here, another packing cube. Can you see what's in here? There's a little teddy in there because I just thought, why not? So this actually has a blanket in it, a little bear, 
that I picked up. It's like a rattle bear thing, but I didn't want to take any kind of big stuffed toys or anything like that with me. It's just a nice little cute thing. It could sit with them on their, um, what do you call it? Car seat, things like that. You can sit with them next to them. You could put it next to them for a wee photo if you wanted to do that. So I've just took this little rattle with me. And then I have this little jacket, which is like a little shearling jacket. I did show it in one of my vlogs before Christmas. I picked it up. Um, and it is nice and roasty toasty warm. And it is not too like thick and chunky, to be honest with you. I am going to get advice from the midwives when I'm leaving. Because obviously we will put them in their car seat. And you can't really have them in like snowsuits or anything too bulky when you put them in their car seat because they need to be nice and snug tight and close to the chest in the car seat that's what makes them safe if you put them into the car seat with something that's too bulky sometimes that means they're not safest so i will ask for advice when we are leaving but if they are able to wear this on the way home i will put it on but if not that is fine we will just keep it for another time and if they are not able to wear that on the way home, I have this little blanket for them anyway, which again has lots of little bears all over it. So that's to go over the car seat once they are strapped in. Now then in the side pockets here, I really only have one thing and that is the mini tubes of Sudocreme. Do I need both? No, probably. Will I need either? No, probably not. Um, bum cream and stuff like that is probably not something you're going to need for your newborn. But the reason I'm putting it in here is because it's something I'm going to have in my nappy bag anyway and use up. And I really like the little mini size. So I'm just keeping it in there anyway because it will end up belonging to that bag. And right in the front pocket here, we have this which is our little uh, baby on board car sign. Um, and I'm putting it in here so that we remember to put it on the car once baby is in the car. You don't legally need to have one. It was just that somebody's picked that up for us um, like before we've had them and I thought that's quite sweet. Do you know what? I will just put it in this bag and that means it's there and we can stick it on the windshield on the way home. And now I'm just going to lay out in front of me my bag for me. I will put a little bit of footage in here so you can see what I mean by it being sectioned. One half is just empty. You can normally put clothes in it and the other half is like a little zip bag. So let's do this half by half. Continuing with the baby stuff on the zip side. I'll just open it here. I do have a pack of Pampers here. Oh, hello. She's joined us. Uh, this is the pack that I got free in one of the Emma's Diaries bags. So there's 22 nappies in here. Again, I have watched some videos where people said they took like a little 22 pack with them. They were only in for a couple of days and used about 12. So again, I think it's very dependent on your baby and what's going on. Again, if my baby is in the NICU, then they might change a a lot of the time or they might provide a nappy to be changed by my bedside might not be the situation straight away. So this little pack I think will do me absolutely fine. So we do have a bigger pack of these and if Alan needs to, he can bring me more. And the other thing that I'm taking for the baby in this bag is a packet of the Aptimil Pro ready to kind of go breast milk formula. Um, this is the ones that are the little bottles that are pre-made. Is this open? Probably not. Now I did open um, one of these already, but I bought two packs just in case. So let me just show you. This is the sterilized teat here. So they are all ready to go. They look a little bit my insulin pump stuff, if I'm honest with you. Um, but that is all ready to go. And then there's the little bottles here. Sorry which are 70 ml bottles of formula. So that is them there. You screw this on the top and the bottle is ready to go. Now, of course, if you're a lady who's gonna be breastfeeding, you might feel there's no requirement for that. But what I will say is that even people I know who plan to breastfeed, their milk didn't come in straight away and things like that. So they can be quite useful to have on hand. Again, because I'm being induced so early and it's C-section and I don't know if I'm gonna be in contact with my baby from the get-go, I thought bringing them would be a good idea. We will see how we will go. Uh, I'm not completely ruling out breastfeeding, but again, breastfeeding brings another kind of, not complication, but another kind of hurdle for a diabetic person because you're using more energy and calories and things like that. We've probably heard this before in breastfeeding and you really have to watch your insulin requirements when you are breastfeeding because you are then more inclined to have low blood sugars. So those are all things that I've had to take on board. I'm not totally ruling it out, but I thought taking a packet of those bottles with me would not be a bad idea. Now in this little bag, this is baby's going home outfit. Everything else in this bag is for me. This is the last baby thing. But I know a lot of people maybe be like, just take them home in whatever sleep suit you took. 
that's a bit OTT, having a go in home outfit. But do you know what? This is my first baby. And also, I'm a little bit like, I'm one of these people that I feel good when I get myself done up and feeling a bit nice and putting a little bit of makeup on and wearing a nice outfit. It makes me feel better. And I just feel like it'll be a really nice time. It'll just be a really nice thing. Like we're, we're getting to go home and depending on how long we have to stay in the hospital, we're eventually getting to go home or we're getting to go home the next day. Whatever it is, I just like the idea of a going home outfit. So this is the one I have here. There is a little vest as well to go underneath this. But I have a little sleep suit here and it has little bears on it. Of course it does. Uh, and this is from Mamas and Papas. But because this one does not have integrated feet or hands, I also have a little pair of booties and inside there a little pair of uh, mitts or socks, whatever, socks, mitts? I think I have both, just in case. Uh, but a little pair of booties that's like a little bare feet. And I actually have, so that little sleep suit came with this hat here, which has little bare ears and it says bare hugs on the front here. But I also knitted a little hat. Well, I didn't knit it, I crocheted it. And of course it is a little bare hat. And I think actually it will go really cute, <laughs> really nice. The other thing to think is as well, this would probably be too hot within the hospital, but I am having my baby March in Scotland. It could snow for all I know, to be honest with you, when I have my baby. I have no idea when we get out. It might be a glorious, lovely spring day or it might be absolutely fucking freezing. So I am just covering all eventualities there. Now, in this other side, I have a packet of the, if I can get this out, oh my God, um, the Boots Maternity Pads. Now, there are 10, 10 towels in here. If I do end up staying for longer than three and five days, I'm probably definitely gonna need more than this. But again, as someone who works in the hospital, I'm telling you right now, they might be a little bit chunkier. They might be a little bit more like, you know, you're sticking big old chunky monkey 80s style sanitary towels in your pants, but the hospital do provide them. So I'm taking this pack of 10. I will use them as I need, but I have no shame, no fears, no worries about using the hospital ones if I need to. They are there. There has been the odd occasion I've had to use them on a shift when I've, <laughs> I've not got access to other sanitary products and that has happened on a shift. And you're like, oh great, you've came today and I wasn't expecting you. I'll need to stick on one of these big meaty <laughs> like incontinence pads essentially. But it's just like a really, really thick sanitary towel to be honest with you. I don't mind using the hospital ones. I just thought I would come pre-prepared anyway. And I also have this little laundry pouch bag here. And in here, I have the Tenna Lady, uh, like adult nappies. Do you want to say that? I don't like saying adult nappies because I don't usually say that in work. Incontinence products, that's what I would say. But that is essentially what they are, like the adult nappies. I bought them in the black, but I also bought the really high-waisted ones because I'm having a section. So I have four pairs of them in here. And the reason that I'm not taking the whole pack with me is because it was just too chunky to fit in the suitcase. But also my thinking is in the first few days, I will probably wear these as underwear and slot one of these in to these pants. And then as and when, when the pads needs changed, I will change one of these and these pants will hopefully stay intact. I also have in this side a very small travel hair dryer. I know there'll be a lot of people who'll be like, okay, so you're saying like, don't take a towel and stuff because that's unnecessary and you're taking a hair dryer. But do you know what? See, when you're in the hospital, one of the things that makes you feel the best is having a shower. I stand by it, I've always stood by it. All the times I've been in and out of hospital throughout my whole life, and patients that I know feel so much better once they're fresher. So I am going to take a hair dryer with me because I just feel like if and when I'm going to go home or maybe even if I'm in there a little longer than I expected, to wash and dry my hair is just a nice thing. I am also taking this which is just a laundry bag so I can slot any kind of if it's baby stuff or my stuff into there. I also have this little laundry bag as well because if it is my stuff I feel it might be a little bit more blood covered I'm not gonna lie so this is a little bit more like it's you don't have to actually see anything and it's kind of got a bit of a waterproof line into it as well so I'm taking this one more for my stuff and this one's more for baby stuff now as for clothing I have slotted in this is my packing cube here and actually you know I thought it was burst there it's not it's just a slipper um this is my packing cube and in here I don't actually have any 
clothes. Just nightgowns and housecoat, um, a dressing gown, if people don't call it a housecoat. What do you say? I say housecoat, you might say dressing gown. So I've got a waffle kind of dressing gown, housecoat, whatever you say. Um, and this is usually the one I would wear in the summer months. So it was like, I have it spare anyway. I wear a nice fluffy one in the winter months and then this one is a little lighter. But again, I think for in the hospital where I think it's gonna be quite warm, this is also a nice dark gray color as well. So I think that will be a good choice to take into the hospital just to cover up a little bit. I also have a pair of these slipper socks. Now, I am going to take flip-flops with me. They are in this bag as well. I will show you them. And these are white. <laughs> and I know people will be like, hmm, probably not the best choice. But a little bit like I have shown already, my Yoda slippers are more like those pull-on slippery sock type situations. My feet are huge. And I think this is much more comfortable. Um, they still have the little pads on the bottom so they can have a tack to them so you don't slip. Probably I'll just put these on more for comfort, more than kind of going in and out the shower. Uh, I'm taking these, which are from Marks and Spencers. This is a five pack of, again, high-waisted pants. Uh, they are absolutely huge, actually. Wait, I'll take them out and show you one. Big, massive pants. So at the moment in my pregnancy, I've actually been wearing the Marks and Spencers ones, but they're more like this. They're like the boy short type ones, I suppose. They're maybe about this height. But I thought for leaving the hospital with having a C-section, one of the big, big style, the big pair, granny pants, whatever you want to call them. I hate saying that because there might be loads of women who are like, that's the pants I always wear. I fucking love them. They're great. <laughs> Why would you call them granny pants? But you know what I mean. So I'm taking five pairs of them. This is just a little pack that I picked up in preparation. And I bought them in the bigger size than I would usually wear as well. So they're nice and loose. As I say, if I'm wearing the tenor ones, I'm not gonna wear these two. It's just more if I start to feel a little bit more like myself and I think, do you know what, I want to wear a real pair of pants today, I'll put one of these on with a pad. I then have three nightgowns. So I have this one here in the blue, this one here in the kind of oatmeal color, and this one here in the dark. Again, because I am not having a natural birth, I'm not that worried about like what I'm gonna be wearing when I go to section. I will probably just wear one of the hospital gowns. There's no requirement for me to wear my own nightgown. I'm quite happy that, you know, if I'm wearing a hospital gown, it's gonna to go to their laundry and they can deal with it. Do you know what I mean? I don't wanna take my nightgown that potentially gets covered in iodine, blood, any other kind of bodily substance that I am gonna then have to clean up. So, I am taking this one kind of more for the night before type situation, before I actually go down to theatres. I will put a gown on in the morning before I go to theatres. And then the dark ones, these are more for afterwards because obviously once I've got a little baby lying on me, things like that, they might get dirty and that's fine, but the darker ones won't stain so much. I then have these here. This is my bras that I've been wearing quite a lot of. I've put the navy one in. Today I'm actually wearing the kind of more nude pink one. Um, but I've also put in two of these that are also from Marks and Spencers. These came in a pack of three. They're just like <sighs> cheaper version of the Calvin Klein ones, like, you know, the kind of sports bra type ones. They do have some marking on them around the edge where you can see it would hold a bust, so to speak, but very, very stretchy. So <laughs> if my milk should come in or anything happens, and again, very much like useful, you just pull it down over your boob, under your boob, whatever, they are super duper stretchy. I'm not worried about being uncomfortable. So I've took one black, one white, and this one here, as I say, there's a little bit more form, like molding to it, but very, very comfortable. And they came in a pack of three as well. And I just thought I'll take one of them, potentially for going home. And just underneath that little bag, as I said, I do have a pair of flip flops as well, because again, I don't know what my feet are gonna be like by that point, how much fluid I'll have had in, all that kind of stuff. And I just thought, take the flip flops just in case I don't fit into anything else. Now you might be wondering, well, why do you not have any clothes with you? Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I am very much someone that, even when I am in hospital, I like to have clothes. Even if it's just joggy bottoms and a t-shirt, I don't like to be in my pajamas all day long. Even the very short stay in hospital I had a few weeks back, I was very much like that to Alan. Bring me some joggies, bring me some t-shirts, bring me things that I can wear clothes tomorrow. And I walked out of there with jeans on. I don't like being in my pajamas all the time. So why have I only took jammies? Again, the reason being, I don't know how long I'm gonna be in the hospital. I kinda of don't know what the situation is. I might get out in a couple of days. I might get out in five days to a week. It just really depends. 
So my theory is, if I'm in the 90s and I'm not enjoying things, I can let Alan know, please go and bring me this in, please go and bring me that in, and he can bring it into the next visiting session and I can wear them the next day if it's a big problem. The same with a going home outfit. I do not have a going home outfit here. I will obviously go into hospital <laughs> wearing clothes, but I don't have a going home outfit because again, in what is supposed to be springtime in Scotland, uh, I don't know whether it's going to be absolutely pushing my rain the day I get out or whether it's going to be snowing or whether it's going to be a lovely spring day. So my plan is that I am going to put together a nice going home outfit because again as I say, me getting myself kind of done up a little bit, putting a little bit of slap on makes me feel good. So I'm going to put together a nice going home outfit and it will be prepared in a bag and if Alan needs to bring that to me to get home then he can bring it either the night before I'm going to get out because usually you get a kind of good feel for when you're maybe going to get out he can bring it the night before he can take away the nighties and stuff like that whatever is dirty and everything will still fit back into the bag but I'm not having to take loads and loads of stuff with me because as I say Alan will not be with me throughout he will be able to go home in the evening he will be able to put a wash on and come back to me and if he needs to bring me joggies or whatever else throughout the time I'm in then that is fine now I do have a little toiletry bag here as well this is just what I would normally take again because I don't know what the milk situation is going to end up like I am taking some of these little packs that I got in the Emma's diary or bounty bags and this is a Lansano disposable breast pads there's two packs here and then this is one set that was in the boots box that I got so I just put them into a little plastic bag because I thought again if I was only going to be there for a couple of days I probably wouldn't even use one of these uh, milk usually comes in around about day three to four so and that depends on person to person as well that's not a set in stone rule of thumb but I may need three, I may need none, I may need five. And again, Alan can bring me more if I need, but I thought three was a nice round number that I'm gonna stick to. I then have a little packet of face wipes. I never use face wipes anymore, very, very rarely. Uh, I always use like a muslin cloth and an oil cleanser and stuff like that. But in the hospital, and I can just imagine the first few days after a section, I'm not gonna be rushing to the sink to wash my face. This will do me just fine. But I have also brought some cotton wool pads, a muslin cloth and some earbuds as well because I always just carry these in that little travel bag anyway so they were already in there and I thought why not. I have a toothbrush and some toothpaste obviously. I then have uh, some deodorant, some is it deodorant or is it antiperspirant? Antiperspirant, I've got some, a little mini one of them. And then I have this here, which is a little refillable tube. Again, something that I usually take traveling with us. Refillable tube, and this is just shower gel. I've just filled it with a uh, Lush Rose Jam. So that's what's in there. And I have a little shampoo and conditioner that I have also refilled because again, I think feeling fresh in the hospital is something that just really picks you up. And I have also taken my kind of miniature version of my skin routine. So I have a nice spray here, which is the Suarez Time is Running Out Mist. I love it, it's so, so good. There's very little left in this, so that's why I popped it in here and I started using another one on the daily at the moment. And then I've got the Isn't Tree Toner Plus and the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid. Uh, you can pick these up from sites such as Stylevana and Yes Style. I have never been paid to talk about them before, but this brand Isn't Tree is my favourite at the moment. I think it's so, so good. And I do have a code with both Yes Style, which I'm going to pop up on the screen here, but I also have one of those like discount link things for Stylevana. I will pop that down below. I am not paid in any way, but I do receive a kickback from the Yes Style one, so you know. A lip balm, a glossy lip balm. I thought that would be a good thing to take with me because again, hospitals are very dry places and a mini moisturiser here as well. What is this? I can't remember what I've decanted into this but I know it's a daily, <laughs> like a daytime facial <laughs> moisturiser but I can't remember what's in it. And lastly in this bag is a little dry shampoo as well because I'm not going to be washing my hair every day but I've taken stuff to wash my hair if I need it. And that is everything that is in my toiletry bag. And then I do have a very small bag for makeup. This is just a little Kiehl's bag. Again, I know there will be people who's like, what the fuck do you need makeup for? You're not going to be making makeup every day. 
but depending on when we get out how i'm feeling what's going on and i do just feel a little bit better with a little bit of something on my face i'm not taking foundation or anything like that i'm taking this concealer from elf this is the hydrating camo concealer because i don't really enjoy the original camo one being kind of more dry skinned so i'm taking that i am also taking a tinted moisturizer which is this one here from l'oreal this is the l'oreal skin paradise again really like this one this is in the shade fair 03 i think it's very very nice and i'm taking a couple of mini um real techniques brushes because i figured um whether it's to put on like, the tinted moisturizer i'll put on with my hands but if i want to put a little blush on a little bronzer anything like that two mini ones will do me just fine so i'm taking this rose ink cream blush and this is in the shade an enemy because I just think it's absolutely beautiful and if it is a nice spring day I can have a little pop of colour on my cheeks and I am taking the Physicians Formula Bronzer which as you can see there I have hit pan on because it is one of my absolute favourites so again I can look a little fresh of face. I am taking this mini mascara from Rare Beauty it's not my favourite but it's a little mini mascara and I just popped it in there and I am taking this mini gimme brow from benefit as well because this has been in my travel case for i don't know how long and it probably needs used up so i threw that in too and lastly i have got the burt's bees all glow stick which is the one that i usually always wear when i used to go to work so as you can see here it's just there's no color to it whatsoever it's just a nice kind of you see that sheeny sheeny kind of glow it's like you could say it's a little champagne -y, but really it's just more like a nice kind of oily sheen to the tops of the cheeks so i've taken that as well and i know maybe you know in a month's time i'll come back to you maybe i'll be like you know what i didn't use any of this shit that's absolutely fine but i know what i'm like and i know feeling better what makes me feel better so i want to take that little bag i shouldn't have to justify it and i fucking won't um but just another couple of notes here because i know this video is going to be really really long as i said i am not taking towels i am not taking pillows i am not taking bedding i just do not feel they are required to go to an nhs hospital they have all of those facilities i'm kind of used to it maybe it's just someone if you've never been in a hospital before and you don't like the towels because you know they're they're massively industrially washed and dried and they're quite scratchy and you want a nice comfy towel that is fine by all means but i don't feel the requirement for it uh, snacks as well i don't feel i need to put any snacks in the only thing i actually have squeezed into this little bag is one of these uh, robinson's like the squash things where you just squirt into water because uh, a water bottle again is always something people will say take a water bottle with you to the hospital get one with a straw I probably would second that if you're somebody who's on like having labour and you're you know either in a pool or you're on your back for a long period of time and you don't want to be having to drink out a cup I think that is a really good idea to take a water bottle with either a sports cap or a straw but I think I'll be okay just using the jug of water that they provide me with it's cold water it comes in a jug you can ask for as much as it as you want you don't need to buy it so I've got this here because I think just put a little switch into my water might be quite nice but also I obviously like I have to watch my blood sugars and stuff so I'm not taking any kind of packs of sweets with me or anything or any Lucozade tablets like I've seen a lot of people speak about that to give me that extra boost through labour. I don't necessarily think it's required. I think if my blood sugars go a little haywire either up or down then the doctors will deal with it. They will probably give me glucogel, they will probably give me some glucose through a drip, stuff like that. So I'm not feeling like I need to take all of that stuff. With regards to your hubby and he is sitting for hours on end and you're in labour and it's a natural labour and it's going on for some time, it might be worth it if they do bring a little packed lunch with them. I know um, Alan's mum certainly told me when, uh, Alan, when she was having Alan's little brother, his dad showed up with a back lunch because he was like the last time I was here it took ages so I'm gonna bring a back lunch by all means do that that's not a problem and if you do want to take snacks I would do that but I have never felt the need to take snacks when I go into the hospital um the hospital food is never fantastic I'm not going to claim that it is because I work in one and I know what it's like but I just feel like I don't need to take loads of snacks with me. If I do take any snacks with me, it might be something like some fresh fruit. I quite like the little boxes of fresh fruit you get out of the supermarkets that's already pre-cut, stuff like that. 
because then if you get cereal in the morning for instance when you're you're out of your c-section or the day before you go or whatever it's quite nice to put some fresh fruit on your cereal i quite like that as a snack as well i also might take in like a little bag of crisps or something like that i might put into my handbag like just my handbag that will be on my shoulder when i'm walking in which coincidentally is also what my electrical items will be in uh, i've also seen loads of people like taking fans and stuff again i don't think that's a bad idea taking in a fan but I know for a fact that a lot of the reasons why hospitals don't have fans in them now is because of what it blows around the ward. So the bacteria it can blow about, the dust that it can blow about and stuff like that. If you're in a room by yourself and you want to use your own fan, I don't think that's a problem. If it's one of those little handheld ones, I'm sure it's not going to cause too much issue. But I know for a fact that infection control do not allow a lot of wards to have fans for that reason. So I'm not going to be taking a fan in. I am going to be taking um, wireless headphones because again the night before when I go in I imagine that I'll want to do something so I will probably just watch Netflix on my phone or something like that I could take my laptop and all that stuff but I'm kind of like ugh, I can't be bothered and I know for a fact like I have patients who bring in laptops tablets all that kind of stuff and they they play games on them they, they watch programs on them in the evening absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that but I also know that there's sometimes people in the wards where we can't guarantee if your stuff is safe and if it goes missing, you do not have a leg to stand on if it does. So that is the reason why I'm not taking too much stuff with me from that point of view. Um, with regards to my camera and stuff, we may well take some photos again on our phones, maybe a little bit of footage on our phones to send to friends and family. It certainly won't be for YouTube. So I am not going to be taking any expensive stuff like that with me. Um, the other thing I would say to take is a charger, a long charger, and I have bought a new one actually from Primark. It was a couple of pound and it's like an extra long charger so that you can reach it because that is one thing, the plugs are a little bit further away from your bedside sometimes. And I think that is absolutely everything. I hope I've covered a lot there. I know this video is probably really lengthy and it is very specific to, you know, I'm in the UK and these are the things that kind of go on. I know for a fact, again, if we're talking about snacks and stuff, the last time when I was in a couple of weeks ago, there's a tea and coffee station. You can help yourself to water, tea, coffee, biscuits all day long if you wish. So like I said, when I was in, a couple of things that Alan did bring me were things just like some fresh fruit and um, what else? Did you, oh, and a bottle of fizzy juice because I just fancied a bottle of iron brew and I was like, can you get me a bottle of iron brew extra? I really want a nice fizzy cold drink. So he brought that in for me as well. <sighs> But that is where we're going to leave this because that was a really, really long video. And I hope this was useful. I will put a description box down below of all the bits and pieces that I am taking with me and what I feel is a necessity um, if you are going to give birth. It will be slightly different if you are having a natural labour. You may be wanting to take a berry bottle and things like that. And as I say... I could go into labour spontaneously and end up giving birth naturally, vaginally, and then I might be like, oh, I wish I'd put some of that stuff in my bag. But to be honest with you, this is more me prepared for going in electively. And that's where we're going to leave it. And I will see you all again in the next one. Ooh.